Now what this example demonstrates is an issue that I see a lot, and that is where you need to bring these two together. Usually you're on a step ladder, overhead, holding the light. So this can be a little bit tricky. And the problem is, is if you put these two together and you do not pre-twist, you're gonna let the wire nut do the twisting, which usually manufacturers recommend, and you lead with the solid core. So if the solid core is slightly longer than the twisted pair, you put that within your wire nut, you start your twisting. And usually what you're looking for is for it to bite and then for you to get two rotations of the wire outside of the wire nut. Now, what the problem is here and what the error can be is that stranded piece is not being securely fastened within there. This is what's happening. That solid core is actually going through the, the threads here of the wire nut. So this is what's internal to the wire nut if you take the plastic off. And then the strands here is really just kind of snaking around and only getting one or two rotations. So if I undo that, then in the pull test, the strands will pull right out, even though the solid core is still, the teeth of the threads here is still within the solid core holding it within there. This happens all the time and it's all about the installation. It can be a very effective connection, but there is a lot of opportunity for error. So the big design difference that makes me more of a fan for this ideal push-in is if we take our solid core wire, usually stripped to about a half inch, and we insert that in, and we can see it's secure within the push pin. Then we take our, our braided strand, making sure that the braids are not frayed off and they're together, so you might need to twist it slightly, and then we can press that within there. So then we also see that the strand is seated it passes the pull test. So that big difference is the transparent see-through housing. So I actually did remove the internals of one of these. So what this is showing you is how they secure. So there's just these tabs that will be pressed out of the way when the wire is introduced. That is what's holding it in. It bites into the copper during that pull test. So this bar here that goes across these three different tabs is actually the bus bar and that's what's responsible to tying all of these wires together. But there is the best option and that is a WAGO 221 lever nut. Now you might know of WAGO's lever nuts from the 222 model which is right here. I'm going to focus on the 221 but the 222 is a little thicker. The levers are a bit harder to pull open. In the most important part, it's not transparent. So that's why I prefer the 221 for DIYers. With the lever nut here, all you have to do is just pull the levers up for the number of wires that you have. And we'll do the same application where we have a 14 gauge solid core. We'll insert that in until it hits the back wall. Close the lever, that will secure the wire. We'll do the same for the stranded 14 gauge. Close the lever, and then just like the ideal, we can see that those wires are fully seated in here. So for me, the 221 easily is the best wire connector because for DI wires, we're not doing this very often. We want to do it safely and securely, and the lever nut on the 221 is the easiest to operate where you're going to get consistent connections which are secure and safe within your electrical boxes.